Hello and welcome back. This is part 3 of the car AI series. In the last part we set up this car with the wheel colliders we need in this episode. In this part we're going to make the wheels turn in the right direction so the car can steer by itself. So first little explanation. Let's say that our car is over here and we have two waypoints over here and there. Our car needs to drive to the waypoint with a smooth curve. So we can't lock the wheels that they are directly facing towards the waypoint. So actually when our car is over here, maybe the wheels are turned in this direction over here. Let's explain this a little bit more. Let's say this is the top view of our game. Our world consists of coordinates. We have an x axis and a z axis and this one and this over here is our origin with position 0 0. Pretend that this dot is our car. It has a position x3 and z2. So the position of this car is represented by a vector. This vector is 3.2 because our location is calculated from the origin. So 3 on the x and 2 on the z. We also have a waypoint. In this case it's on 4 4, so 4 on the x and 4 on the z. This position is also represented by a vector from the origin. So this vector will also have 4.4. But the thing you want to know is the vector that goes from our car to our waypoint. So how do we calculate this? We need to calculate our waypoint relative to our car. Unity already has a function for it and this is the inverse transform point. This takes a position, in our case our car, and then calculates a point in the world to the relative position of our car. So if we give two world positions, the outcome of this function will be the relative vector. So how does this look in Unity? First we give it a transform. Then we say dot inverse transform point and then we give it a vector 3. So in our case it will be the car transform, so the transform of our own car. Then the function inverse transform point and here we say a world position and this one will be the waypoint position. And the outcome of this function will be the relative vector from our car transform to this waypoint. So in this example it will be 1, 2. So 1 on the x and 2 on the z. So now we have our waypoint position relative, relative to our car. What can we do with this? From this vector we can already say whether our waypoint is at the right side of us or at the left side. The x parameter explains this to us. If the x is positive, the waypoint is at the right side of the car. If the x is negative, it's at the left side of our car. So we can already define left and right. The outcome of this function will be minus unlimited till positive unlimited and zero is straight ahead. But now from this vector we need to go to do some more calculations to get the angle that we need to put on the wheels. To do this we take our vector and divide it by its length. If we do this we get the number that goes from minus 1 to 1. So if the waypoint is straight ahead the outcome will be 0 and if it's way off screen to the right it will have a value of 1. Also for the left side if it, go, if it goes way outside the screen to the left it will have minus 1. So now we have a range from minus 1 to 1. Then we multiply this by our maximum steer angle. So our maximum steer angle says what our maximum rotation will be of the wheels or how sharp we can make turns. So if we multiply this value with our maximum steer angle we will get our wheel angle. I understand if this doesn't make much sense to you now but we're going to try it in Unity. The first thing we're going to do is create a function that gets our first path node and if we reach this we go to the next. So this will keep track of the current waypoint. Let's go to your imaginary car, add a component with a new script and let's say the name will be car engine. Create it and edit and open it up. So let's make a variable that holds our path. We already defined the path in our script. Let's see the path. This will have a private list of the nodes. We want to copy this list and put it in a new array. So every car has a copy of the nodes. Let's make a public variable type of transform and this will be a path. So the parent object of the path. Then here in the start function we want to get all the components that are under this path object. So all the nodes. But we already did this once. We did it in the path script. So let's open this up and let's copy this piece of code. So from the transform 
until the first for loop. Copy this and paste it in the start function. To get this working we need to change some things. First we make a new transform array that stores the, all the path transforms. And then it says get components in children. The path script was attached to the parent of all the nodes. So we could just say that we need to get all the components in children. In this case the script, is, the script is attached to the car. So we don't need to search in our children but in the children of the path. So let's say path at the beginning. So we have path.get components in children then transform. Here we say node is a new list of transform. We didn't define node, so let's do that. Let's make a private variable. And the type will be a list of type transform. But we can't use list right away because we need to import it. We do this, we do this by using system.collections.generic. And as you can see it turns green now, so we can use it. And the name will be nodes. So that's everything that we need to do to get all the nodes in our path. So in this variable we drag the path parent and in this nodes variable all the nodes of the path will be stored. Let's quickly drag it in because otherwise we forget it. So let's close this one. And at our car we drag the path game object in it. Now let's create the variable that keeps track of our current node. So we make a private variable. Uh, type of integer and we call it current node. We default this as 0, so the index of the nodes is 0. So now comes the calculation. Instead of update, we're going to use fixed update because we're working on physics and calculations. From this fixed update function, we're going to call a new function and the function will be apply steer. Now let's create the function. So we write private void apply steer you can also set this voids as private because as default they are private so private void is actually the same as just the normal void but I think it's more clear if you write it just to be sure so if you take a look back at our example the beginning of the calculation starts with the inverse transform point. So our car transform dot inverse transform point and then the waypoint position. Let's make a new variable, a factor 3. And call it relative vector. Then we equal this to our function. So we take our own transform. So the, so the car transform. Then we say dot inverse transform point and then we say our nodes with the index of our current node dot position. Oh, I see that we forgot something. In our path script we needed to check if the transform of our node is not the same as the parent. We also do this in our little script over here. But we forgot to change the transform to the path transform. So let's quickly do this. Right, path.transform. So otherwise it verifies with our own transform, but we need to verify it with a path transform. So now let's quickly debug this if, to see if this works. So we print out the relative factor. Then we hit play. And we take our first node, let's go to the scene view. And here you can see our relative factor. So let's move this quite a bit to it. And let's see it from the top. And if we now change this, we can see that the x value of a relative factor is correct. So we know that this function works. So it calculates the vector from our car towards the waypoint. Now let's go a step further, remove the print line. So we now have a relative factor. We now divide it by the length, so we get a range from minus 1 to 1. 
So we write relative factor, relative factor equals our relative factor divided by the length of the relative factor. And this one will be the magnitude. So a vector dot magnitude equals the length. So our, rel our new relative factor is the relative factor divided by its length. You can also write this shorter. To do this, you say relative factor divided by equals relative factor dot magnitude. These two lines are exactly the same, but this one is shorter than this one. So let's use the shortest one because we love short codes. The next step is multiplying this value by the maximal steer angle. For this, we make a new variable, a public variable, type of float, and let's say max steer angle. We default this at say 40. The next thing we're going to do is divide the x component of our vector by the length to get a value between minus one and one. So we only divide the x component of our vector by the length. So let's make a new float variable and let's say new steer and we equal this to our relative factor dot x divided by our relative factor dot magnitude. Relative factor dot magnitude equals the length of the vector. So magnitude is the same as the length of a vector. So now that we have this value between minus one and one, we're going to multiply this by the maximal steer angle. Let's make a new public var variable. This one will be a float. And let's say max steer angle. And we default this as say 45. Then we say this, we set this between the brackets. And then we multiply this whole thing by our maximum steer angle. So now our new steer angle contains our real angle. So the new steer contains the value of the angle of the wheel colliders. Now we want to set this variable to the angle of the wheel colliders. So to apply it, we make two new variables. This will be public. wheel collider and the first one will be wheel front left so fl and the second one will also be a public wheel collider but the front right so fr now to set this angle we say our wheel front left dot steer angle equals our new steer also do this the same for the front right so the front right equals the new steer save this and let's see what it does in unity don't forget to drag the wheel colliders into it so open this one up add the wheel colliders we add the right ones so fl goes to fl and fr goes to fr let's hit play and go to our scene view if we select those two we can see that they are rotated a tiny bit so this means that they are pointing somewhere towards the waypoint let's set our first waypoint slightly to the right so go to your path and the first node we're going to drag it to the left. Now let's have a look at our wheel colliders. They're again rotated towards our waypoint. So this is exactly what we want. Our car now points in the right direction. We can also use our car to see what it does. So select your imaginary car, go to the top view and move it a tiny bit towards our waypoint so you can see it more clear. And if you now move your car, we can see that our wheel colliders rotate towards it. 
We've only applied it to our wheel colliders, so not the wheel itself will rotate, but only the collider. And as you can see, the colliders are rotating towards the point. So that's it for this episode. In the next episode, we're going to make the car drive by itself. So we already let the car steer by itself. So the next thing will be starting the engines and let the car drive. I hope to see you all in the next part and good luck with your own AI cars.